All right guys, Jay here with Jay's Two Cents. It's summertime, it's hot, and I promise you guys videos on how to keep things nice and cool. Now the computer we have behind us might look a little bit familiar. This is actually my old Switch 810 case, and we have transplanted all of Coconut Monkey's computer parts over to there, and look at this awesome cable management. Who who built this computer? Jay huh? did. I wonder who built this computer. He totally did. Uh. Like I said, it is really hot where we live. In fact, today it was actually kind of cool. It was only in the upper 90s. That's cool. Yeah, it was only in the upper 90s. But we're looking at 110 degree temperatures coming. Did you know that? This weekend, 110. Good thing working. Yeah. So we need to keep this thing cool. Now, this is what he's been using. Hand me that. Ha hand me that over there. Would you? Now, his i7, this is an x58 platform. It's a 960 i7. Yeah, it's prior to the Sandy Bridge series and it gets really freaking hot. Now this is the cooler that came with it. it. It's just a dinky little 120 millimeter cooler and without an overclock or any overvolt here, take it, it burns. Without any overclocks or anything on this thing, he was still getting up into the upper 80s, lower 90s on temperature, way too freaking hot. So I decided, you know what? Why don't we go ahead and do a cooling video where I throw in this bad boy right here. This is an Alpha Cool Complete Water Cooling Kit. They have a whole bunch of different kits and this is one of their upper end models and I figured why don't we go ahead and pull out all the stops. So this one is one of their premium kits. Now why am I doing a kit review? You guys are constantly asking me for parts that I recommend in your water cooling loops. You guys want to do custom loops, but you don't know what parts to buy and it gets really confusing. If you've shopped on Aqua Tuning's website or you've checked out uh, Frozen CPU or any of those other retailers, you guys know there are a metric crap ton of parts and it gets very confusing. Now, unless you're doing some sort of a super custom build like I did for Red Mist or like I tend to do for myself, or you've been doing this for a long time and you just know parts compatibility because you've done it so much, I don't actually recommend that you guys piece together your own loops because kits like this are available. Now this is a custom loop in a box. This is not downgraded parts that they just kind of put into a, into a kit. This Alpha Cool has a whole range of kits, as I mentioned, that go from the lower end to the upper end. This happens to be on the upper end spectrum, but these are hand-picked parts put in a box. The exact same parts that if you bought them individually through the retailer, they're the exact same packaging inside. They just put all of the guesswork, or they take all of the guesswork out of it and put it in here for you. So that's why we're taking a look at one of these kits. Now we're gonna go ahead and unbox this. We're gonna put it in his system and we're gonna see how the temperatures perform. Now the cool thing about these kits is as I mentioned, they have everything, including the little adapter you need to plug into your power supply unit to jumper it and bleed your system because uh, that's actually the part people seem to have the most trouble with is figuring, figuring out how to bleed their system. Now, when you open the box, you can see you're greeted with a bunch more packaging in there. Imagine that. Like I said, guys, this thing is completely custom loop in a box. Now, reservoirs, this is a square box. Obviously, we're not going with a tubular. How do you do that? How, how do the, oh yeah, tubular. We're not going with a tubular res. We are going with a bay res. Now a bay res basically does just that. It sits back here in the bay. The cool thing about that is typically, at least with the Alpha Cool kits, they have an integrated pump mount in the back. So the D5 pump, which is, in my opinion, one of the best pumps you can get on the market, it's a Lang pump. It's actually an industrial pump, uh, basically mated to work for PCs. It's gonna mount right here in the back. So you don't even have to think about the loop order. The most important loop order, which is pump and res, is a singular combo. So this thing's got the little screw mounts on the side. It just slides right into the reservoir. And in fact, he'll be able to see all the fluid and stuff from the front. He can even put an LED bar right here on the top and light up his reservoir if he wanted. There's an indentation there. It's filtered. It's got flow control in there. It's actually got like a little, I don't know how you describe that. It's basically like an anti-turbulent fitting on each, the intake and the outtake. And they this is actually the upgraded version. The old one had the, it was like a copper looking decal. I gotta go this way. It was like a copper looking decal on there and a copper fitting here, but they've made these black and blue to match the Alpha Cool theme. I think that looks an awful lot better. So that's the reservoir that comes in there. The, uh, it even comes with the fluid, which is important too. It comes with an entire liter of their CKC Cape Kelvin Catcher. I don't even really know what that means, to be honest. 
I think they might have to rethink the name of the fluid. Basically, guys, this is just an ultra-enhanced anti-corrosive, antimicrobial fluid. It's pre-mixed. You don't have to add anything to it. You can add color to this if you want. In fact, we might do that. I don't know. We'll see. So it's already pre-mixed and ready to go for you. This is the pump right here, as I mentioned. It's just a plain old D5 variable speed, so we can control the speed on there. This is essentially the exact same thing that I replaced on the... Uh, Red Mist build when we had the pump go bad and they sent me the replacement pump. This is pretty much what they send you. EK, Swift Tech, Alpha Cool, um, XSPC, anything that's labeled D5 is just a rebranded Lang pump. So they're all exactly the same. Our CPU block, we are using the Nexos um, cooler here. It's essentially the same thing that is in my computer behind me, only this is the Acetol version, not to be confused with the asshole version. No, I'm just kidding. That was kind of a stretch joke there. It is a copper base, solid copper base. And then it's nice and light though, because it's not the brass top, which mine is. It has all the mounting hardware, everything you need, no guesswork. Set that right over there. Now, tube. This is a uh, three eighths inch tubing here. So it's not half inch tubing, but there's, I just want to put a myth to rest real quick. There is absolutely no difference whatsoever between 3 8 tubing and half inch tubing when it comes to cooling capacity. In fact, if you want to get technical, the acrylic bent tubing that I put in Red Mist is even smaller than this. So yeah, this, has already come, this already comes a 10 foot length, I believe. There you go. So what else do we get in the box here? Oh yeah, fittings. You got to have your fittings. These are already all picked out for you. They are compression fittings. They are not barbs. These happen to be kind of a dust black. The fittings are already there, compression fittings. You're not dealing with barbs and clamps, piece of crap. Of course, you have to have your fans. So they come with three, and this is the cool part. You guys know that these are not cheap fans. These are the NBE loops. Now you guys may think these look an awful light, a lot like the noise blockers. And some, some of you guys might even be going, oh, those are just noise blocker ripoffs. Well, guess what? AlphaCool was actually the one that designed this fan in conjunction with Noise Blocker. So they're the exact same fan with the exact same rubber styling that we all love about the Noise Blocker fans, only they're in blue because AlphaCool is blue, and they are 1200 RPM fans. Great static pressure, that's why they include them in the kit. I highly, highly recommend them. As I mentioned earlier, we have our little jumper here. This is just a piece that goes on the end of your 24 pin for the power supply. You plug that in. And when you turn on your power supply switch or you plug it into the wall, this will send power to your pump so you can bleed your system without turning on anything else in your system. This is only a few bucks, but this is invaluable when you do this sort of thing. Definitely pick one of these up if you're looking at doing a custom build for yourself or custom loop and you don't have one of those. Now, the radiator, as I mentioned earlier, this is one of their upgraded kits. So this is a 360 millimeter radiator but it is also a 60 millimeter thick radiator. So this is one of the reasons why we converted uh, Coconut Monkey's case over to the NZXT, because look at the thickness of this thing. That's what she said. Say it. That's what Say said. it, yes. <laughs> look at that, 60 millimeters thick by 360 millimeters, 10 fins per inch, you can see right through the thing, multiple port, port outputs on there, so you can pretty much set this up anywhere you need. But I just wanna point out, I'm gonna to have to remove this little side panel right here. But this is gonna go right up in there like that, and it's barely gonna fit. In fact, we're gonna to have to put the fans up in the top part in that little cubby, because there's no way these would fit without hitting the uh, motherboard with the fans on there. So it's gonna be kind of stealthed up in there a little bit. It's gonna be a nice, clean look. And you know, you have to admit, the Alpha Cool radiators, these are just gorgeous, don't you think? I mean, look at this. But if this radiator is not big enough for you, well, maybe you'd just like to get yourself one of these bad boys. Maybe go with a 560. Yeah. No, this is actually my radiator for Skunk Works coming up. So here, go ahead and hold on. Just get, ah, you thought I was going to throw it, didn't you? I got him. You should have seen him. He was, yeah. So yeah, that's everything in the box. Of course, it does have some instructions on there. It's really, really simple, guys. There's only a couple of connections. You're going to hook the reservoir to the pump or the reservoir to the CPU, CPU to the radiator, radiator back to the reservoir. It's really simple. We're gonna go ahead and maybe time-lapse this build. I'm not gonna do a how-to because it's so basic. In fact, I've got other videos you guys need to check out, like somewhere maybe there and there on the screen. Go check those videos out. But we're gonna go ahead and install this thing, fire it up, and we're gonna see what the temperatures look like while we check out this Alpha Cool custom loop in a box. So don't go anywhere. I meant to hit the monitor, the, the lens, and I completely missed. Hand it to me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reset. God.
right guys, so when it comes to installing the AlphaCool all-in-one kit, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, the compression fittings are easy to use. You just screw them in and make sure they're nice and tight. Don't use a wrench on them because you might actually destroy the threads on the plastic parts, but uh, screw down the compression. They give you plenty of hose. I mean, the hose be plentiful. And if that joke was bad, blame Coconut Monkey. He's the one who gave it to me. And uh, as you can see, we only used, we actually used less than half of what we needed because it's such a small run, as you can see. I mean, it's just from the reservoir to the radiator to the CPU block and back. Uh, when it comes to cooling, it sure as hell destroys this. I mean, if you remember from the other video, we were getting uh, 90, we were, we were hitting about 90 degrees Celsius with this thing under load, yeah. Right now we're running, we've been running Prime 95 now for 20 minutes. Uh, the CPU coolant is pretty much equalized and we're sitting at low 70s, high 60s with an overclock, by the way. This thing's at almost four gigahertz with an overclock. I have no idea what the voltage is. I'm not even monitoring voltage. I'm just letting it auto volt, which you know is typically a bit higher. And the other temperatures that you saw before were with no overclock whatsoever. Now there are some things I don't like about this kit. I love the design of the Bay Reservoir, but it has got the stupidest filling mechanism I have ever seen. I've just got to say. The mechanism has a nipple that pulls out and has a little hole in it that you've got to try and finagle the coolant through that's too small for any funnel to fit. So we actually had to like finagle a, like a cake icing thing that you squeeze like the tip off of that into the hole and then a funnel into that and then coconut monkey had to hold that while i filled it with the bottle and even though the bottle has like a little nipple and squirter thing it doesn't fit down in that hole it's too small so most of these bay reservoirs that you see on the market have a fitting on the top that you pull out slightly unscrew and you can put a funnel right in the top this mechanism on here it's got to go i mean it looks nice the the bay reservoir on this looks fantastic but the filling mechanism on it it's just I, I don't know what they were thinking. You can't possibly fill it higher than 75%. Now, considering 75% on this is above the import, the intake port for the pump, it's not going to be a problem. It's just why even label 100% that is about 10 millimeters higher than the actual fill port. I mean, the, the, physically, that's not possible. The other problem we had is because this is one of the massive, massive 60 mil rads, we actually used the entire bottle of coolant, and it still wasn't full. I had to actually... Uh, thin it out some with distilled water. Now, distilled water added to this, it's not going to be a problem to the coolant. I mean, the coolant has some anti-corrosives and antimicrobial stuff built into it, but I don't think it's, I don't believe it's going to be a problem. And if you're looking at getting one of the bigger kits, like the 480 rad that they sell, you're going to have to get another auxiliary bottle of coolant. That, that's just not enough. One liter is not enough for systems this size. I mean, the Bay Res is pretty big. With a big rad, it's just not enough. Those are really the only complaints I had about the system. Other than that, uh, the system is straightforward, it's easy to install, and I really don't have any other complaints about it. I mean, it's keeping the temperatures perfect on this thing. If I go ahead and stop the stress test, which has been running for, like I said, 22 minutes now, our temperatures drop right back down into the 40s. In fact, once the, the coolant equalizes, it'll be down to the 30s. And this is a closed off room right now. There is no airflow in or out of this room. And it was actually sitting in the mid to low 60s when we started the test. So the temperatures actually rose as the temperature in the room goes up. It's one of the things about water cooling. They go up in a one-to-one -one ratio. If your temperature in your room rises five degrees, the temperature in your computer is going to rise five degrees if you're water cooling. That's pretty much how it goes. So guys, this has been the Alpha Cool all-in-one uh, kit. They've got a bunch of different sizes from 120 millimeter all the way up to 480 mil, different size thicknesses of radiator, different pump styles, even re different reservoir styles. So guys, make sure you go over to the website, aquatuning.de if you're in Europe, aquatuning.us if you're in the, the Americas here, and they do ship pretty much globally. You can save 5% by using Jay's, Jay's Two Cents 2014 discount code. It's down in the description as well. And as always, guys, I hope to see you on Twitter or the Facebook if that's more your thing. And I'll see you guys in the next one.